order appear to be capable of inflicting terrible wounds on themselves and claim to experience no pain, almost no bleeding, no infection, and near instantaneous healing. How? Their leaders, or sheikhs, say they tap into spiritual energy of the universe that comes from Allah and protects them. They say that they are channeling energy to heal people and this sounds very improbable. Uh, what they're probably doing is sort of a placebo effect. If you believe it, it works. Psychologist Dr. Howard Hall was so moved by the power of what the dervishes were doing that he tried it himself. Convinced that something other than self-hypnosis was involved, he became an initiate in the Sufi order. In search of evidence of the energy that protects him during deliberately caused bodily damage rituals, Hall has now joined forces with Dr. Gary Schwartz of the University of Arizona's Center for Frontier Medicine, a leading institute in one of the most controversial fields of medical research, energy and spiritual healing. When I first saw the footage that Dr. Hall brought back from Iraq, I couldn't believe it. In fact, I wondered, was there fraud involved? So once I be became convinced that this was not just trickery, then the question was, well, gee, could you explain this as some sort of placebo effect? But as you look at instance after instance of phenomenal uh, endurance of uh, things that most of us couldn't possibly do, and there seems to be virtually no long-term damage, you begin to seriously question whether all of this could be explained as a simple mental effect and then you start wondering, well, could the spiritual side of this be important as they believe it is? Schwartz wants to determine what, if any, changes are taking place in the brain as Hall attempts to jam an ice pick through his cheek. But first, they need a measurement from a controversial device known as a gas discharge visualization instrument, or GDV. The GDV system picks up electrical activity around the fingertips and then using sophisticated computer algorithms actually presents a whole body image of the different regions, energy regions are around the body. GDV technology has its roots in a controversial process discovered over 75 years ago called Kirlian photography. In 1939, Semyon Kirlian found that if an object on a photographic plate is subjected to a high voltage, high frequency electrical field, an image is formed on the plate that resembles a halo. Some believe that this halo is a physical manifestation of the spiritual aura which supposedly surrounds us all. Scientists believe the halo is usually moisture. The effect is known as a corona discharge. Using the GDV, Schwartz is looking for evidence to show if Hall's personal energy field or aura changes as he injures himself with the ice pick. But first, they need to take a baseline reading. Now it's time for the test to begin. Hall is wired up to an electroencephalogram machine, or EEG, a device that graphically records the electrical activity of the brain. And I do the piercing of this for specific aid for this intervention from the ancestors and the current shape. In order to obtain this permission from the sheikh, Hall goes into a meditative state and says a series of mantras over and over again. The meditation period lasts nearly 90 minutes. His brain did in fact go into a more relaxed state over the course of the prayer. We didn't see any, any anomalous things. He wasn't going into seizures, he wasn't going into a deep sleep state, he wasn't in a hyper-aroused state. His brain looked relatively normal. He says that what we're about to record is the actual transfer of energy between the Sufi spiritual leader and himself. So does he feel any pain? Gee, you can open your eyes if you'd like. 
No, it's just an adult ape. Uh, there was no physiological pain. So, um, what you'll do is you'll take it out and then you close your eyes and just relax, okay? No, I'll just check it out. Are you ready? ready? Yeah, we're ready. I'll make sure I got the right place. Okay. Yep. Now, will the wound heal as quickly as promised? No blood? And I'm going to lunch after this, guys. Yeah, that's good. By the way, there's no blood on the... On the uh, Droplets of blood continue to trickle out. As far as I can tell, just it's usually a couple yeah. drops that come out. That's about the timing. But after just a few minutes, Dr. Schwartz takes a closer look at the wound. And it is... I can't even tell where it is. I mean, it's just, it's not obvious. A whole bunch of dots. Was this result really caused by Sufi energy healing? Now the team looks to the GDV to see if Hall's aura was affected. What this shows, which is the first time ever, is that if we compare the pre versus the post we're seeing with the GDV a selective decrease in energy curiously in the area where the actual skewer was placed through the jaw you saw this gaping hole in the energy field in the area of the jaw which was frankly much greater than I would have initially anticipated does the GDV show that a spiritual power intervened and protected Dr. Hall as claimed or is there a simple explanation? Yes, I think it's possible that there is a simple explanation. But the simple explanation is one that Western science, scientists have difficulty with. The simple explanation is that this is actually coming from permission from divinity, that it really is involving a spiritual component, and that that component is very, quote, simple. We have a name for that which looks superficially like science, that uses scientific gadgetry, scientific jargon, but, but is fundamentally not science. It's called pseudoscience. We'll be taking a much closer look at the rather mysterious GDV device later on. But first, let's meet a person who tortures himself not for spiritual purposes, but for money and without the help of mystical energies. Meet Tim Cridland, a.k.a. Zamora, the Torture King. He performs a regular Las Vegas stage show where he inserts sharp instruments through his body. And he, too, claims to suffer no pain. But here, the similarities with the Sufis end. Cridland makes no claim to be doing anything supernatural. It's the real thing. There's no trickery in it. There's a very uh, thin margin of error. If, uh, if I lose focus or concentration, I can get hurt very severely. Does he not feel any pain, or does he just have an incredible tolerance for torture? No blood, no pain, ladies and gentlemen. That is mind over matter. We wanted to measure Cridland's abilities, so we went to see Dr. Joshua Prager, an anesthesiologist at the UCLA School of Medicine and a noted expert on the mechanism of pain. Using a device that delivers a low voltage electric sensation, he'll determine what Cridland's pain tolerance really is. Now we're going to change the frequency. Most people score in the four to six range. Cridland's first attempt is a 20. Your score basically puts you in outer space compared to the rest of the population. And after one practice round, Cridland scores an off-the-scale 27. Dr. Prager believes that by using meditation and self-hypnosis, Tim has somehow learned to block pain signals from being processed by the brain at a nerve path called the descending pathway. Okay, ready? Go. Well, I theorize that he activates the descending pathway, whether it be through some sort of self-hypnosis or uh, some way of creating disattention. Clearly, he is able to change something in his nervous system so that he can tolerate more pain. So if Tim Cridland can tolerate pain by using meditation or self-hypnosis, could this be what's allowing Dr. Hall and the Sufi dervishes to not feel pain? Perhaps, but does this also explain the Sufi claims to be able to heal extraordinarily quickly? We went to Dr. Joseph Molnar for an answer. 
Molnar is a reconstructive surgeon who has operated on thousands of wound-related